Carolyn Doobie here, and today I'm sharing with you about a master creator that I was fortunate enough to watch create. Now, spending time with this master creator who made artwork with such abandon, with such fearlessness, with such freedom, as I watched her, I realized my entire artistic journey has been all about getting back to that place, a place with no inner critic, a place of freedom. It, it was beyond amazing to watch her work. What, do, would you like to see one of her pieces of art? You probably don't know her name um, because, well, she hasn't exhibited a whole lot of art publicly yet, but the artwork that she made, it's beautiful. And it looks like that. I watched a five-year-old create. So today's video is completely and totally and utterly inspired by her lack of an inner critic and her ability to just embrace, play, and express herself. Well, here's her picture again that started it all. And instead of using markers, I decided I was gonna use jelly prints. So I grabbed a bunch of jelly prints and I'm gonna cut some very intricate and detailed shapes out of these to create the bodies for the people that I'm gonna make on my canvas or my creation here that I'm making, totally inspired by the most awesome five-year-old. And at any point, if I start thinking in my head, which I did, is this the right size body to create? Is this going to be this or that? I just remember it's play. I'm not going to ask those things. I'm going to cut stuff out and it will all work out and be wonderful in the end. Decided this piece of wood that I'm working on needed a little something to make the paint flow easily on it. So I'm going to grab some gesso and just slather it over with a layer of gesso. Well, you know I want to add some more color in there because I have that impulse to do that with everything. And so I'm actually going to finger paint with this one. But as much as I want the freedom of being a five-year-old, I'm also not crazy. So I am going to actually take off my wedding ring so that I don't get it caked and covered in paint. And then I'm also going to put something called a barrier cream on my hands that'll help make it so that my hands clean up a little more easily and also keep any of the gunk chemicals junk that's in paint from soaking into my skin. So that's my little bit of grown up there, but now it's time for little kid to come out. Well, I just grabbed that acrylic paint and just squirted it right on there. Absolutely no need for a palette, just smearing and rubbing it around. And I could have stopped at any point. I really liked it at this point, but frankly, it just felt so good to have my hands in it. I just couldn't stop doing it. My hands did end up completely covered in paint. So rather than just rinsing them off, I decided I'd use that to actually do the edges of this because usually I forget that. So woohoo, actually remembered this time. Well, now I'm going to position the bodies about where I think I want them. And if I need to, I'm going to trim some of them down. I'm going to alter them, move them around because you know what? I can. There are no rules to this. There isn't a contract that I've signed that says I must do this a certain way. Once I've got them how I like them, then I'm going to glue them down. And you can use any kind of glue that you want to glue it down, a glue stick, tacky glue, whatever. My go-to tends to be gel medium just because that's what I'm most comfortable with. But again, it's not like there are any rules to this. I just want these things to stick to the board and I don't care what it is that sticks them down. I just want them to stay put. Well, now they're all glued down, but no, they aren't actually all dry. But that's okay. It doesn't have to be. I am just grabbing some acrylic paint and I am drawing some very, very detailed people on here. Completely and totally, utterly copying, borrowing, being inspired by that five-year-old. I have a terrible time drawing arms and noses and proportions and all these different things. And rather than let that stop me from creating or playing, I decided I'm just going to do it this way. Doesn't matter if these things are in proportion. It doesn't matter if there's enough room to actually fit it the way it should be. It doesn't matter if one arm is longer than another. What matters is if I'm having fun and letting myself play. And that's what I'm going to do. It really doesn't matter if those arms seem to be coming right out of her hips. It's okay. Because it's not like I'm actually drawing diagrams for a medical journal. I guess in something like that, it'd be really important to have things anatomically correct and to proportion and scale. But I'm not doing something like that. I'm making this crazy little art thing. And that person may only have one arm. Can't decide. Decided not to worry about it. So we're just going to make that the one-armed person. And really, this is all for me just about the play. But I can also laugh at myself a little bit. I'm getting so into the play, you'll notice the green person, I didn't even give him a face. 
Now, not that that's a good or bad thing, I just didn't give him a face, but I actually thought I had, so when I'm all done with the blue person, and I think, yeah, I've got it all, something just looked a little off to me, and I couldn't quite figure out what it was. And then I realized, oops, I forgot the face on this one. And this was a very easy, outstanding opportunity that presented suddenly to fix, because the paint's right there, and I just gave that little guy a face. Well, I decided it wasn't quite finished. I had this happy group of people and I wanted a word that would capture that childlike, happy feeling. So I grabbed my stencil called Kindergarten Words from over at Stencil Girl and I just gently stenciled the word happy on there. I'm using a cosmetic sponge and I'm doing my very best to use a very small amount of paint, which for me is actually a really challenging thing to do because I just love to glob on loads and loads of paint. But if I do it with a very, very light touch or a small amount of paint, I'll actually be able to keep all those lines just crisp and clear the way I want them. So this way I've got the word, definitely got that kid feeling to it, but I don't want those stencil breaks in there, and that's really easy to fix. I'm just going to take the paintbrush and kind of go right on top of this, close up any of those breaks. I totally know where I want to hang this on the wall as a total reminder to just be happy, to play, to let myself be free, just like a five-year-old can do. Well, thanks for joining me today for a little fearless play, totally and completely inspired by a very, very wise five-year-old. If you've enjoyed this video and you would like to see more of my videos, I'd love it if you subscribed to my YouTube channel. And of course, I'd love it if you headed over to the blog, said hello, checked out my newsletter, even signed up because there's a free video and downloadable PDF waiting for you when you do that. Thanks for being a part of this colorful journey.